Hey guys, welcome to Precision Machine Shed. Today what I got here is a little Alice Chalmers FB2024. This is a little 2,000 pound forklift. I picked it up here recently and we're gonna see if I can get it running. It is not currently running, so uh, it needs a new battery. They pulled the starter out because they said the starter wasn't working correctly. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see if we can get it running here. Um, the first thing I got to do is I got to pull the battery out and get a new battery. So I'm going to do that first and then we're going to we work on the starter a little bit and uh, get that back together because I pulled it apart because it wasn't working properly. So this thing should still be 6 volt. It's got a 6 volt battery in it. It's still wired up. Uh, it doesn't appear to be converted to 12 volt and uh, we'll see. We'll tear into it here and we'll get rolling. So we're starting underneath the uh, the hood here, I guess you'd say it, and we're taking the battery off. These old cables were pretty crusty and they were very, not the easiest things to get off of here. Uh, and also getting this battery out of there was not very easy too. They jammed that thing back in there. It sure is not, uh, you know, these things are 60, 70 pounds and you kind of have to one arm it out of there without dropping it on something and breaking it. Uh, so there I successfully got it out and also pulled the uh, air cleaner cover off, which that is an oil bath air cleaner, if you're wondering. Good old 1920s, uh, 30s technology, something like that. Here's just a shot showing, this is a little Waukesha. I believe they're one liter engines and they have approximately a two inch by three inch bore stroke. They're tiny little cylinders and they're about uh, 61 cubic inches. Here is the starter. This is the way I got it. I actually got this thing in a pile of parts in a box and all I'm doing here is I want to put this thing on the lathe to turn the I think it's the uh, little copper part down. I can't remember. I'll mention it here but uh, I'm not an expert on these motors but I can get away enough with uh, fixing it and I got the tools to fix it so this is just the setup it's set up between centers and we're just gonna cut the copper area there and clean it up a little bit as you can see there's a, a ridge area there where the brushes contact uh, uh, I don't know as a commutator or whatever it is but you get that wear ridge and then the the purpose of this is actually turning this down to get one even surface all the way across there and the easiest way to do that of course is just stick it on a lathe like this and turn it down I'm just touching off here on each end to see kind of where we're starting and then we'll continue cutting here in a minute but I think this was about a, a five or ten thousandths cut in from zero and we kind of go from there and we cut down the least amount possible we'll keep turning so I'm getting a super nice finish on there, um, but you see we got a ways to go there. So I gotta engage my feed here. Pretty sure this is all nothing, nothing, nothing until we get back to there. So we'll back up here and cut again. So I am about 20 thousandths deep into this so far, and you can I don't know if you can see that, but it's a super nice finish. So we'll go another 10 here. So we're at about 30 thousandths, give or take. Still cutting super nice. The old self bend lays, I bet you these lays have probably cut a ton of these armatures over the years. The commutators, I believe is what it's called. So that looks like, we'll stop it and check it here, but that looks like it might get clean it up or be pretty dang close to cleaning it up. I think we're going to clean it up right there and that'll be good. And I don't even know if I'm going to polish that because it's such a nice finish on there. I think we're completely cleaned up there. So Yep, that's looking pretty good in our our uh, mica there is packed full of crap so I can just scrape that out of there and I think we should have enough room to to work there. So yeah, that looks super nice. Nice and smooth. Alright, there we go. Look at that, nice and shiny. So the next thing I'm going to do here is we got to clean clean all that 
gunk out of between those, I don't know what you call them, the leads we'll call them, but um, there should be, I gotta find a tool here. The other thing, I got this tiny little saw, I have no idea where I got it from, but I'm gonna go in there and just double check, make sure we're cleaned up a little bit in each one. And this will cut into the mica a little bit. If you didn't have a mica cutter, undercutter, this is how you would do it, I guess. Piece of a hacksaw blade. Maybe that's what this is for, I don't know. It works pretty well for it. This is one of them tools I've never used until today, and I've had it for probably six years. See, they were right. I'll use that someday. Someday I'll use that. It'll come in handy. I guess today's the day. All right, there we go, I think that's it. Well, there it is all back together. I cleaned this up a little bit, got these cleaned up, and that should be good, and put this all back together, so now it should function the way it's supposed to. All right, so next thing we gotta do is the housing here. I gotta clean this out a little bit, but this, if you can see it, one of these brushes here does not have protective coating over it. This one does. I'll probably wrap some tape around that one, but I'm going to try to get, I got a, the biggest piece possible of heat shrink here, and I'm going to try to shove that over that, and I might have to put a couple pieces on there, but try to get that over that wire. Otherwise, I'll just tape it, and it'll probably be good enough. All right, I'll torch it here. Ooh. That old cloth burns a little. All right. Well, there we go. That should cover it up pretty good. I put a little bit of tape right at the end there, but I'll clean this up. And then the trick is, you got to get these the brushes back in these holders here when you put it in there. So. These other brushes look okay. I'm going to clean this piece up a little bit and then we'll get it all back together. All right, the tricky part getting these in there. All right, starter is back together. All right, got her all back together, got it wired up. Wired up, greased up, oiled up, I guess you'd say. Spins, spins nice and freely, all the brushes are back in place, and uh, for all intents and purposes, that should work. So now I guess we gotta throw her back in there, throw a battery in and see if it does anything, hopefully. All right guys, so I got the battery in there, I got the starter back in, and we'll, Give her a go here and see if it goes. I'm just gonna set that on there. And it should be a neutral here, so. It does turn on. So the solenoid's clicking, but we're getting nothing. So. I might try and jump the starter and see if there's something in between there that's not picking up. Well, I got a 12 volt hooked up just to the battery here and we're gonna jump, jump it and see if we can do anything or get anything out of it. So 
so nothing. The starter is clicking, but it's not. Hmm. So I might have to pull that starter back off of there, which I really don't want to, but either that or the engine's stuck. So I'm at the point now where I might have to get this thing in the garage and work on it in a warm space. All right, well, we're back at this thing. So I think the last video we we hooked up the battery, had a click in the solenoid and a little click in the starter. So I'm thinking now I'm going to pull the starter off and we're going to check that on the bench. And then I'm also going to pull the plugs here and drop some oil in there. And we're going to see if we can look in there with a the camera and see if they're corroded or anything or something looks off like it needs to be repaired. So if you can see right there, that heater hose that goes up to the carburetor is blocking us from being able to take our one spark plug out. Awesome, huh? All right. I'm keep going here. These are not the most spacious things to work on. So this is my Teslong MS450-NTC. And I use this for looking in rifle barrels quite a bit. So there's cylinder number one, or four. It's pretty gunky in there. Number three don't look horrible. Number two looks neat. Eh. That one don't look as bad. The valve is up there, so that's good. The valve is down on these other ones, I believe. So, number four here looks the worst. Looks like we got some water in there. This engine's probably stuck. All right, drip a little croil down in there. And then I'm also going to go get some fogging oil and throw in there. All right, I'm also going to dump a little ATF down there. Oop. And some fogging oil. sit for a bit and hope for the best, right? Trying. Alrighty, well, you can't really see much, but got down inside there, got the starter back off, and I took a pry bar and spun the flywheel by hand, and it, I spun it over at least a couple times, but it moves freely, so we know our motor's not stuck. I had the head off and got that taken care of. Uh, everything moved freely and so I think we're back down to the starter is our issue. So I have a neighbor, he's going to look at it. He used to be a motor repair guy, so actual motor motor, not an engine motor. Um, he's going to look at it and see what he can figure out for me. But I think the problem is our starter is bad, uh, which was kind of the initial initial thing that was told to me when I bought this so I'm gonna have to either get it fixed or try and get it replaced somehow. 
Well, I did, when I had the starter off, I did crank it over a few times with uh, the pry bar and we were able to get the motor loose. So I can turn it by hand there. I think in the, in the process of doing that, I found out that the brand new battery I got was less than half charged. So I think that was part of our issue. And then our other issue here, I think these old battery cables, they're pretty corroded and messed up and they don't look that great. So I bought new cables. We're going to put the new cables on. I charge the battery. We're going to charge, um, swap the cables, put the battery in here, and we're going to hopefully be able to get this thing to crank. Uh, if I can get it to crank, I can, I don't have propane yet. I did order a tank, but I will uh, maybe dump some ether down there. And I don't know if, if ether through that carburetor will work. Somebody's probably sitting out there saying, yeah, that won't work, but I'll give it a shot. And, and uh, see, because I'm not sure how those propane carburetors work. It doesn't look, looks like there's probably an orifice down in there somewhere, but it should get in there. So we'll give it a shot. So let's swap these out and then we'll uh, put it all back together and test her out. Oh, let's try to finagle this battery in there. This is not the easiest thing to do. It's like dropping a 50, 60 pound battery in a spot that shouldn't fit. What I did here is I got the cables hooked up and I swapped positive ground, negative lead. So hopefully the next person won't screw this up, but we'll hook it up here and give her a shot. All right, so batteries installed, new wires. Let's see if we get any go with this. Uh, still nothing. All right, so I've been messing around with this thing and uh, if you can see it there, there is a wire that goes from the solenoid to the starter. And here is the old one, big, huge, thick thing. And we're gonna see if that d did anything to solve it. Look at that, that was our problem. Oh yeah, she turns over great now, look at that. <laughs> so I'm pretty pumped. Um, let me go look and see if I got any starter fluid. I don't know if I do, otherwise, uh, I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, this cable here, somebody had this huge cable and this is a four-aught cable and I think they're supposed to have like a, I don't know what these are, eights? Eight, you know, a typical battery cable. So I think this, yeah, zero gauge cable was sucking up a lot of our juice here or it had a bad, had a fault in it. So that's good, we got crankage now, that's awesome. All right guys, well here's where we're at. So we got our cranking, which is awesome. I was pretty pumped about that. So yeah, that big, huge battery cable. What did I do with that thing? I think I threw it across the, this guy. It's a zero watt. So whether there's a fault in here or something, but um, a little loose in there. Anyways, this cable I think was our culprit because after I swapped this out for like an eight gauge or a six gauge, um, it actually worked. <laughs> so we got the thing cranking. I don't have any starter fluid. I might go grab some here, but the other thing is I did buy a propane tank for this thing the other day. So we should be having, I think uh, it's Friday, Saturday today. We should be getting that on Tuesday. So once I get that, I'll fill her full of propane and I'm gonna look at a few more things here. But um, I think, I mean, as far as uh, I gotta replace a antifreeze line there, but I mean, Let's take a look here. Other than our antifreeze line here that we got to replace, um, we don't really have mud daubers around here for the most part. Somebody mentioned that in one of the posts to free that up, but I had a guy one time told me there's a button on this thing somewhere you can push, but that's like a, that's for the thing. The propane comes in down in the bottom there. So maybe this thing down here, is there a button on that? I don't know, I don't feel nothing. But anyways, propane, yeah, comes up through here. Um, and I gotta free up the choke there yet, but we'll maybe, I'll replace these lines here and we'll see if we can get this guy running. 
All right, well guys, it's a day before my propane tank's gonna show up. <clears throat> I got the water line replaced in there and I actually kinda wanna see if this thing will pop off. So I got a little ether and we'll see if it does anything here. Nothing. I'm gonna let her sit for a second. Might have to make sure we got spark here. All right, well, picked up a propane tank. Oh, let's see if I can get it up there. Oh. This bad boy is a Amazon special. Pretty good deal if you need a propane tank, get a, I think this is 140 bucks off of Amazon. It's cheaper than buying a new one somewhere else. Mixed reviews, but so far this one, I filled it up yesterday and the lady said it was purged, so it must be good to go. She said she was able to fill it up completely. Ooh. Ah, what the hell? not supposed to do that. Hmm. Do I this backwards? Here we go. Ah, whatever. Doesn't need to go anywhere. It's gonna fit. I have to turn this a little bit. There we go. So I'm not quite sure if this is even sparking yet, but we're gonna hook it up, turn it on, and see if it'll do anything. I think it's about 30-ish degrees outside today. So let's turn it on here. Well, I can hear it flowing through there. <laughs> well, let's crank it up and see what happens. See if anything happens. Oh, my battery's getting dead. I can smell the ether coming out of there from the other day. No bueno. All right, well, I have um, the cap here and it looks okay, and not to say it's not bad, but it's not cracked or anything. Um, the leads are a little dirty, all that crap came off of there. Uh, and these plug wires, I think, are probably the main problem why I'm not getting spark. Here's the little rotor thing, I believe they call that. Don't. Um, anyways, this plug wire, this one's bent, this one's broken. They're all super dirty, and I think what I'm gonna do is, I got, went down to, I got a runnings near me, so this is a set of plug wires that you can make your own, because I went to every parts store in town and they did not have any old school uh, spark plug wires like that, unless you order a set, and I don't wanna wait. And so the last place I stopped to, there was a guy there that was very smart, and he said, Oh, why don't you run over to Runnings? They might have, because I mentioned implement, you know, maybe for a tractor or something. He's like, why don't you run over there? I bet you they might have something. So lo and behold, I went over there, and uh, here we go. So, I've never done this before, but everything I've read, you, you take these, you strip the wire, and you bend it over. And so I think I'm going to do that with these. 
I'm not sure exactly. I guess you break this off and they're sharp. Break one of these off and that becomes your new end. I'm going to leave them a tad bit long because the ones that were in there were a tad bit short in my opinion. I think I'm going to do it how they how most of the guys say in line. They say strip it, pull this bare part out and then bend it back and then crimp it over top of there. And I don't know if that's the correct way to do it with this particular set. It comes with the little boots so we want to get the boot on there first. Um, and we're going to grab a utility knife here and I'm just going to cut half inch give or take. Let's see if we're through there. Just like that. And then it says bend them over like that for most of them. So this has got two, three little prongs in there. You probably can't see them, but. So I'm assuming we're gonna poke that in there just like that. I'm gonna split the difference on the side. You probably have fancy crimping tools for this, but I don't have that. I'm gonna use a fancy channel locks. And call that good, I guess. It seems to have stuck better on the side where the wire was not poking. But I guess as long as it stays in there, that's all we need. So do the rest of them, then we'll throw it on there, throw the cap all back to this. Tight, you can't see inside there, but um, I'm gonna file the points quick too before I stick it all back together. And then I got new plugs for it too. So we'll put this all back together and we'll see if we can make this uh, old timer run. You guys, like, that didn't have the sound on there, but it was sputtering. Let's see if we can get it. Let's try one more time here. See, it, it kind of sputters. I don't know if it's just not hitting on a couple cylinders and not liking the rest of them for some reason. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I checked my timing and I'm pretty sure it's correct, but it almost seems like it's off a little bit. Here, I never clean the top of the cap here. I don't know if that did anything, but we'll give it a shot. All right guys, well, I got it to sputter here on gas and I apologize I didn't get it recorded, but I've been cranking and cranking on this thing. Anyways, it is full of, was full of seeds and those spat out the back. So here, so I'm gonna, oh geez. We're gonna see if we can get this thing to run on propane. It sputtered on gasoline, but I wanna see if we can get it to go on propane, of course. So, I'm gonna open this up and see if we can get gas flowing here. Let's give her a try.
Ah, awesome. <laughs> Yes, yes, <laughs> well, before I run it too much, I better put some antifreeze back in there. Awesome. <clears throat> so I was just gonna mention quick, the thing that actually got this forklift running was there was two wires switched around, so I think it would have been, the firing order is one, two, th four, three. Well, I had it going in a clockwise direction and it was counterclockwise, so I had to swap the wires around so it went in the counterclockwise direction and then it worked. So that was my main issue why I couldn't get the thing running.
right, guys. Well, I did get it running. It actually ran pretty good, but I shut it off and now it won't start again. So <laughs> not quite sure what's going on. I do know I do have a head gasket problem. Um, it is leaking a little bit of fluid out the top of the one of the cylinder um, head bolts, which it did have a bunch of sealant in there before, so I'm sure that was an issue. But um, other than that, it ran really good, actually. Um, I see the cylinder does have a leak in it, which is to be expected, and because it leaked down. But I mean, other than that, with a little bit more work, this thing could actually be, you know, a nice little machine. But I think I'm done with this thing for now. I need something a little more reliable and something that's not going to leak, which might be a tall order. But I'm going to uh, probably put this one out for sale and see what I can get, something a little better. So here you go running mission accomplished hope you guys enjoyed that if you did please be sure to like comment share and subscribe let me know in the comments below what i screwed up on because i don't know everything but i try to i try to do what i can and i try to learn and do things as accurately as i can so uh if you enjoyed that check out more so till next time with the dog barking see you guys later thanks for watching